When you talk about the Donaldson Cross Country Championship and you mention searing heat, the rural backgrounds, and of course cattle country, it can only be the Freiburg 450. It's in the heart of the Northwest and it is the sixth leg of the Donaldson Cross Country Championship. It may be fairly new to the calendar, but the Freiburg 450 has proven to be an extremely popular addition to the Donaldson Cross Country Championship. The entire town comes to a standstill to witness what always promises to be two exhilarating days of action. Freiburg has a rich pedigree of racing and there are few more famous than local hero Chris Fisser, the Atlas Copco Ford driver making a welcome return following his unfortunate crash at the Dakar Rally in January. This year was terrible to stand next to the road and to see the cars and I say it's quite nice to see the cars from the side as well, to see how they behave in that. And um, yeah, I think we, we learned a lot standing on the side. But I must say, that, yeah, it's not lacking to stand. I want to be in the car. Now to a rookie. Well-known actress Shlubi Mboya taking part in the Regent Racing Celeb Challenge. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. No ordinary person can say that they've done this. So I'm really part of that privileged few. I'm a female black woman, so I'm really part of that special few. So I really want to um, take this with a, a lot to give back and a lot of experience to just to feed to people that you, you too can have an experience and just make it your own and make it the best that you can be. On to another lady, navigator Sune Creel, standing in for injured husband Freddy to sit alongside father Quibbis van Tonde. Well, unfortunately, Freddy only hurt his uh, leg like a week ago, so we didn't have that much time, but we've put a lot in this week. Um, driving a lot with, with Jock and with my dad, so um, I think I'm prepared. With three races remaining, it's extremely tight at the top in the production vehicle standings. Anthony Taylor and Dennis Murphy from Castrol Toyota lead on 100 points, but are just three clear of the horns from Mullerlan. Over in the special vehicle category, while the battle for second place is heating up, there's one clear front runner, Quinton and Cully Silvald from Elegant Fuel. Championship wise, we're in a good position. Uh, I think this race is going to going to uh, play a big role in, in the end of the year's uh, standing. So, uh, looking forward to a good race. The father and son team are on 88 points, a healthy 29 points clear of Herod and Hardest Duplessy, while Arthur Barnes and Anthony Asher are third. First up, qualifying and starting things off, the locals, Malcolm Karke and Johan Berger. Malcolm and his dad, Andre, instrumental in putting this event together. Taylor and Murphy once again living up to their reputation at Trouble Free Run, making them fastest in production in a time of 1 hour, 5 minutes and 17 seconds. They've had a very tough year, but Sorrel van Bullion and Philip Hasselmann from Atlas Copco were outstanding to finish second fastest. Another surprise at the top, young Jason Fenter alongside Vincent van Alleman from 4x4 Mega World, setting the third quickest time in class. <laughs> It's like he never left. Chris Fisser alongside Yabi Badenhorst coming fourth in class in their Atlas Copco Ford Ranger. The pair did well despite losing comms 2Ks in and as you can see by Yabi's use of the hand signals. Rounding off the top five, the RFS Treasury 1 BMW of Kenny de Clack and Johan Smallberger. The pair had an extremely scary moment when they went airborne after misjudging a jump. Oh, that was close. In sixth place, with a time of just over an hour and eight minutes, Malcolm Karke and Johan Berger. A good run, which was surely aided by some local know-how. Venter Senior Dion and Jakob van Art from 4x4 Mega World claimed seventh spot. Jason said it was a surreal experience to finish ahead of his dad. I'm not sure his father felt quite the same way. Fastest in Class G, Leander Pinard and Carl Swanepoel from Motor Ride Racing in their Can-Am Maverick. So leading the way in production, Taylor and Murphy followed by Van Bullion and Hasselman with Venter and Van Alleman third. Defending champions in the specials, Evan Hutchison and Dani Stassen got the qualifying going in their class. 
And just like we saw in production, the championship leaders leading the way, the Silvalts from Elegant Fuel, Quinton and Cully, setting the fastest time not just in class, but overall too, to book their place at the front of the grid. Well, not the season Hutchison and Stassen would have hoped for, but they will start second overall after a great ride. Lawrence Duplessis and Keely LaRue were third quickest in class, but they did have 10 production vehicles faster than them, meaning they'll start 13th overall. And what a jump that was. Eat your heart out, Henny and Johan. Well, the fans certainly enjoyed that. And another tremendous jump, this time from John Thompson and Maurice Matten, the first Class P competitor too, fourth in specials, despite breaking their left front shock 20 k's from the end. Daniel Brooks and Gavin Gray picked up a mascot at Sun City in the form of a cow's skull, when if that had much to do at the fifth place for them in their Ducati's properties bat. Second in the championship, but sixth in the qualifying race, the father and son team of Gerhardus and Hardus Duplessis. So the Silvolts setting the fastest pace, 27 seconds quicker than Hutchison and Stassen, while Duplessis and LaRue were distant third after wrong slotting a couple of times. The beauty of Freiburg is that once the racing is done, the action never stops. There's always a hive of activity at the DSP as drivers, mechanics and fans alike inspect the cars ahead of the all-important second and final day. The red hot sun making way for the moon on what was a memorable qualifying race. It's race day here in the northwest, and the prologue proved to be dominated by specials. And in the front of the grid, we've got Quinton and Kali Silvolt from Elegant Fuel, followed by Evan Hutchison and Donny Stassen from Motorite, the first of the production vehicles, and third overall, Anthony Taylor and Dennis Murphy from Castle Toyota. It's all systems go for the Freiburg 450. The Silvalds have had an excellent season and it doesn't look to be slowing down. Grinton, are you getting used to the fact that uh, you're not seeing anyone in front of you in the start of race day? Yeah, no, it's been good. Uh, we've been lucky. We had a good run yesterday. Uh, no major issues. We had some electronic issues, but uh, Martin Roots and, and the guys from Motec worked until 10 o'clock last night and I think we've sorted out all our issues. On the production side of things, it's the Castrol Toyota pair of Tail and Murphy that lead the way. Dennis made the right call at one junction and uh, where, the G where the GPS disappeared for a moment, but uh, it, was, it was the right choice that he said uh, that we must do and it paid off and uh, I think a lot of people got a bit lost there, but uh, we just stayed on it and the, the notes are right, the book was 100%, so I think that's really what gave me the, the win in the prologue, but um, yeah, it's a long day today, we'll see what happens. Certainly is a long day ahead. And the Silvalds, Quentin and Kai get matters underway. Can they make it win number three for the year? Watch this space. Not far behind them, the defending champions in the specials, Hutchison and Stassen in complete contrast, looking for their first victory of the year. Taylor and Murphy third on the road. It's been all or nothing for them in 2014. They either win or DNF. The Silvalts looking good. It really has been a sensational year for them, considering Quinton only took over the driving at the beginning of the season. And again, we can't quite say the same for Hutchison and Stassen. Their best finish being second place on the RFS 450 in Harrismith. The Castrol Toyota pair of Anthony Taylor and Dennis Murphy are chasing win number five. And they admitted that this route suits them perfectly. It's nice and fast with plenty of jumps along the way. The qualifying race, however, did prove to be tricky from a navigational side of things, so Murphy will have his work cut out for him. And it looks as if they've come to a standstill, and let's hope that's just a flat. Three DNFs have littered Van Bullion and Hasselmann's season, so they'll be desperate to do well here, and they currently are second in Class T. Fiss and Bardnos have already climbed to position, the Atlas Copco Ford pair now third. Well, that means that the 4x4 Mega World team of Fenter and Van Allemann have dropped to fourth place. No dropping for Henny de Klerk and Johan Smallberger, the Treasury 1 BMW fifth in Class T. Just behind them in sixth place, we've got Kockenberger. Malcolm and his dad Andre, very popular here in Freiburg and always put in a big party after the racing. 
First in class S, Dion Fenta and Jaco van Aert in their 4x4 Mega World Toyota Hilux. Another class S competitor, Willem Foss and Van der Weiss in their Fossies BMW X3. Third in class S, Yanni Fisser and Jorks LaRue from Rubicon Racing. Only one DNF for them this year, but no podiums yet. Back to the specials, third in category, but first in class P, John Thompson and Maurice Matten. They've had a few GPS problems, but it doesn't seem to be too troublesome. Seventh in class T, Christian Deploy and Henk Janse von Fieren from RFS Motorsport. More DNFs than Fs this year. And they really have had a difficult 2014. And they also hit a tree and had a flat during qualifying. So all considering, it's a nice recovery to make it to day two. And there they pass the sideline pair of de Klerk and Smallberger. And that certainly looks nasty. And uh, we hope that they're both okay. Oh, and now they've come to a standstill with uh, what does seem to be a puncture. Rounding off the top 10 in productions, the Dakar duo Leroy Polter and Rob Howie from Castle Toyota. A wrong slot set them back in qualifying, but they aren't third in the championship for nothing. They've captured four podiums already this year. And as I say that they've come to a halt as well, this route proving to be unforgiving. What an entrance, so to speak, from Lawrence Duplessis and Hilly LaRue. What is it the Force Fuel 450 and fourth in specials? Tremendous driving from Cahardis and Hardis Duplessis. They've climbed a place and are now fourth in class. They overtook Daniel Brooks and Gavin Gray in the Ducatus properties that have now dropped to sixth amongst the specials. Also making their way up the field, Etienne Ninaba and Deval Ferreira, fourth in class six and looking for their first finish of the season. Back to the T's, making them 12th in production, Graham and Trevor Leith in their Ford Ranger. The Horns struggled in qualifying, experiencing a bent rim and troubles with their jack, so they have had a tough time with things today. Well, no such problems for Pitkotzer and Darby Lunger, rounding off the top five in class S, and not bad going for event rookies. The seventh special to make its way through the White Star Racing Bat Spec 2 of Keith Dutoy and Robbie Kutsia. Some of these jumps are providing serious entertainment value for the spectators, as proven by the father and daughter team of Quibus van Tonder and Sunay Creel. Sixth in class S, Peter Ruthven and Hansi Rieda from Rivercon Racing in their Toyota Hilux. Well, the famous number T11, our Regent Racing celeb team of Terence Marsh and Schlubi and Boyer, the petite actress must be loving life in the hot seat. Hot left. Three quarter stop. Three quarter stop. Three quarter stop. Three quarter caution stop. Over, over the road, over the road, through the gates. No trail. Sweep to the left. Commanding instructions there from Schlubi, so after 80 Ks, the Silvalts lead the specials, followed by Hutchison and Stassen. In production, Taylor and Murphy are first, followed by Fisser and Badenhorst, as Van Bullion and Harselmann are now out. Their right steering arm broke off and heartbreak for them. Back to the front and the Silvalts showing no sympathy for their competitors, they are flying and remain number one. Well, it's a different story in productions as Fissa and Badenhorst are the new leaders having gone past Taylor and Murphy. What a fairy tale return this is proving to be for the local driver. Still holding on to second place in the specials, Hutchison and Stassen. Could this be the race they've been waiting for all year? So, Taylor and Murphy experienced a flat and as a result lost the lead in Class T. They recovered though and are currently second. And the pair aren't too used to seeing cars in front of them. And they're certainly not used to that car being driven by Fisser. The old rivals have been reunited and what a race this is proving to be. Fenta and Van Alleman are now up to third following Van Bullion and Hasselmann's disaster. Can the youngster capture his first ever podium finish? Currently he's on course to do so. But not if Malcolm Kark and Johan Berger can help it. They're fourth in class and are gunning to get to the top three, having missed out last year. Another Fenter, but a different class. Dion and Jaco van Art are first in class S in their 4x4 Mega World Toyota Hilux. 
Christian Deploy and Henk Janssen van Vieren have made up some ground. They're the fifth class T to come through in this heat, which is well over the 30 degree mark. Must be torturous inside. And uh, here they are catching up too. And overtaking Willem Force and Werner Weiss in their BMW X3. Also getting ahead of the BMW, Leroy Poulter and Rob Howie. They're already up to sixth in class. Lawrence Duplessis and Hilly LaRue still the third special in the race. But as for Thompson and the mountain, it doesn't look good. Yeah, we don't know. We think the fuel pump has got hot or something's um, it's misfiring at the moment and hopefully in a little bit we'll, we'll get it going. You know, we're just giving it a chance to cool down and then we'll see what happens. Thanks very much. Pleasure, John. Remember in Class G they only do one loop and it's another victory for Gareth Woolridge and Boyd Dreyer. Another exceptional performance from the young pair who have really enjoyed life in the side-by-sides. One loop done and one to go. And the first men in, the elegant fuel team of Quinton and Cully Silvalt. Uh, this last 120 k's finding the route was, uh, was interesting, but my dad did a phenomenal job. Uh, we hardly got lost once, so uh, no, we, we're looking good. Uh, car's perfect, so just the uh, last push to the finish now. Second in the specials, Hutchison and Stassen. And at the end of the time trial route, it got a little bit tricky. Made a few wrong slots and uh, Anthony got past us and was stuck in his dust when it did open up a bit. Um, he then had a puncher and got back past him. And then, um, yeah, a little bit dusty and tricky on the way back in. So after loop one, the Silvans lead the way just over three and a half minutes clear of Hutchison and Stassen. There's daylight and then Duplessis and LaRue. Amongst the productions, the Atlas Copco Ford of Fiss and Bardnos up front, while Taylor and Murphy are in second place. So I must say, it's actually pretty nice. You know, I'd, uh, Evan was holding us up a little bit this morning, and then eventually, wrong stops, and I got past. We were going nice, keeping out of trouble, no, keeping off the rocks, not to get any punches, and then, uh, as luck would have it, I got a punch. I think it was when we went through one gate, there was a dropper that punched the wheel. But, and then uh, Chris came past and I caught up to him again and I was actually next to him and then we thought we had missed the one turning so we went back to look for it in the meantime the the odors were out so anyway I made I started catching up to them again and then about three k's from the end the rear drive shaft broke so they're busy changing it now but uh, yeah we'll see I think it's going to be quite a quite a good dice now towards the end an eventful loop for Anthony and Dennis, as was the case for the Horns from Malalan. Their highlights looking worse for wear. No, we were behind cars in the dust and uh, we went under a tree and it broke the windscreen. Okay, so, so it looks worse than it, it was? No, no, it's not that bad. We, we're still driving. We're battling. The dust is just a big problem. Big, big problem. We can't pass cars. And our screamer stopped working, so it's just not a good day for us today. Certainly not. The horns not even in the top 10 as Fiss and Bardnost are up top, but just 45 seconds clear of Taylor and Murphy. Fenton van Alleman looking good in third spot, 2 minutes and 15 seconds off the pace. Back to the racing and the Silvalts are looking very comfortable up front. They had no issues whatsoever in the first loop, which Quinton said was extremely fast. Fisser and Barden Horst first in Class T. Chris said at DSP that he was feeling 100% and had no after effects from his injury. Hot on their heels, the motorite bats of Hutchison and Stassen. It's currently a specials 1 3 with a production sandwiched in between. Let's hope for Taylor and Murphy's sake they experience a cleaner run in loop two. Of course, Fisser will be hoping that's not the case as he searches for his first win in his very first race of 2014. Third in class T, Jason Fenter and Vincent van Alleman. That's despite wrong slotting in the dust during loop one. Holding on to fourth, Malcolm Kark and Johan Berger. Malcolm summing up the first loop simply as all good. Third in Class A, a distant third, mind you, Duplessis and LaRue, they had one flat during Loop 1. 
Poulter and Howie have climbed a spot and are now fifth in Class T. Deploy and Jansa van Vieren dropping down after losing second gear. The Diamond Men, Hardest and Hardest Duplessis have also made up plenty of ground and are just outside the medals in fourth spot amongst the specials. Rounding off the top five in Class A, Keith Dutoy and Robbie Kutsia in their bat spec three. Leading matters in Class S, Dion Fenta and Jakob van Aert from 4x4 Mega World, despite their car overheating. Yanni Fisser and Jorx Leroux are lying second in S. They also wrong slotted in loop one, blaming the dust as the reason. Another team making up ground and another Silvalt, Wichart, alongside Byron Sykes, their sick in specials. Amazing considering they started 39th on the grid. The windscreen lists Hilux of Johan and Werner Horn, another pair that have climbed. They're now 6th in Class T and 8th in production. The first of the region racing competitors and it's our celeb team. Terence Marsh and Shlubi Mboya, 7th in class and going at great speed. They do, I ever look to be slowing down and they've come to a stop. Oh, and it's just the wrong slot. They're back on track and we'll blame Terence for that one. Deploy and Jansa van Vieren have dropped to 8th in Class T. They've had punctures, gear losses, the works, and glad to see them still going. Same can be said for these two, John Thompson and Marisa Matten. They look down and out, but are 7th amongst the specials, but 1st in Class P. Rounding off the top 3 in Class S, Peter Ruthven and Hansi Reader. The pair describing the route as being fast and dusty. Sitting 11th in Productions and 9th in Class T, Graham and Trevor Leith. They very kindly helped Henny de Klaak in Loop 1 after they rolled their BMW X3. Richard Fuller and Jaco Forster making an appearance. Their BMW X3 is currently 10th in class and could they get their first finish this year? All eyes up front where Chris Fiss and Jarpi Bardnos are flying the flag for Atlas Copco Ford and Freiburg. There seems to be no stopping them now. That's even with all the red hot dust around. And the spectacle is very much appreciated by the spectators. Doing their best to stop them, Taylor and Murphy from Castle Toyota. They've never finished a race lower than first place this year. Will we see another first in Freiburg? And we have a new leader in the specials. It's Evan Hutchison and Danny Stassen, the defending champions, having gone past the Silvals, who suffered a puncture. And here they are now, back on route, but in second place in Class A, certainly not where they wanted to be. We also have a new podium placing. Malcolm Cock and Johan Berger took advantage of Jason Fenter and Vincent van Allemann getting stuck in the sand. The locals are now third in Class T. Again, the locals have a lot to cheer about. Their men are shining today. The youngster Fenter and van Allemann, they must be devastated to be lying in fourth place, so close yet so far. In third place amongst the specials, Lawrence Duplessis and Healy LaRue. They were consistent throughout and have managed to hold their position in class. Not long to go, and it's Chris Visser and Yapi Badenhorst from Atlas Copco Ford who are on their way to a tremendous victory. Fairy tales don't get better than this. Visser, having not driven since crashing at Dakar, claims the win. Yeah, I must say, I'm actually stunned. I can't believe it. Um, unfortunately for Anthony, that had a flat, flat tyre and, you know, luckily we passed him and could have stayed, we stayed in front of him. And Yapi had uh, put us on the right track the whole day. Yeah, I must say, it was an awesome event. As for the other locals, third for Kockenberger. Last year, we were robbed of a third place 20 case from the end. So today is very special for us and, yeah, it went well. It went very well. Visser and Badenhorst crowned the champions of the Freiburg 450, with Taylor and Murphy claiming second place, while Kockenberger rounds it off the podium. It's the race of comebacks. Evan Hutchison and Danny Stassen, the defending champions having not tasted victory all year. 
capturing the crown in Class A. Yeah, it's been such a long time I've completely forgotten about what it feels like to win a race. And uh, to be fair, um, I didn't think we were going to get it. You know, we were stuck behind Quinton. There was nothing we could do about it today. And unfortunately for him, uh, 30 k's out, he uh, had a flat tire. But I know exactly how he feels. That feeling hasn't left me. Uh, the feeling from the desert race, three k's from the end. So I suppose that's the way it goes. You've got to take him when you get him. Congratulations to Hutchison and Stassen. The motor ride pair finishing 20 seconds ahead of Quinton and Cully Silvalt. That's how tight it was, while Duplessis and LaRue grabbed their third spot. As for our region racing celeb, Shlubi and Boyer, ninth overall, meaning Shlubi is fifth in the celeb standings, ahead of Neil Tovey and Marius Roberts. I mean, the vibe is just so relaxed and it's very family orientated and it's all about fun and it's all about like just, you know, separating yourself from the rest. And I, I like that. That's my kind of stuff. Next month, we're back in the free state for the seventh and penultimate leg of the Donaldson Cross Country Championship. It's the Tabanju 450 and it's not to be missed. The Donaldson Cross Country Championship brought to you by Donaldson Filtration Systems a market leader in filtration solutions.